You know, I know that you have seen the drawings and the proposals, and I, I met with them on Monday, I believe, and went over them, and I know they've met with each of the commissioners, um, and will be coming back on the 21st. So, what questions do you have? Well, I know that um, they presented two designs. Mm -hmm. Both of them go back to one tower. Mm -hmm. um, and there's one that's taller and skinnier. Yeah. This is the tall, thin one. And right. Now, that's the, the short, fat one. The developers <laughs> told our editorial board that they talked to all of the commission and mayor. And nobody said, we hate it. Nobody said, we don't find it acceptable. Um, What's your immediate reaction on the, on the latest designs and the concessions that they, that they made? Yeah. Well, um, I think that there are significant concessions that they've made um, and significant improvement in the design and the location of the design on the land, on the property. Um, my personal preference is the tall, thin one. Um, that's 26 stories, um, and the smaller one is 22 stories, um, but they're both the same volume. Um, so it's, uh, you know, the density is, is the same on each of them. Uh, some of the concessions that they've made, and um, certainly going back to one tower, and then I don't know if you can tell on this, yeah, but um, they've also put in a walkway which accesses from Flagler, and then a walkway all the way around along the intercoastal. Come on in. Good morning. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm well. How are you doing? I'm good. Michael Bushner with CBS. What's your name? Michael Bushner with CBS 12. Hi, Michael. How are you? Thanks for coming. Go ahead. Keep going. Okay. All right. Um, so I think the fact that they have put this walk in, um, uh, maintaining access to the intercoastal by the general public, is, is a really big step. They've decreased the size by 20%. Um, and um, I don't they, they said that they that the, the total mass actually is forty is now forty percent uh, less than their original plan. Yeah, what I was looking for, I don't yeah I don't, don't know the numbers, but they had showed me um, the outline, which I'm sure you saw the outline of the original, and then they put this and this within the outline, and it's much smaller than it was. Um, uh, so I think the fact that it's smaller, the fact that there's um, it's weight on the farthest north part of the property opens up the view line. Um, it, the, they're bringing the public in, letting the public come in and um, be able to access the intercoastal from there. I, I, I think that they've made a lot of concessions and um, uh, it's, I think it's a much nicer project, project than it was, much better project than it was. If you had to predict how your colleagues, no, I never predict how my colleagues are going to vote. I mean, do you think this will this will be enough? Um, I think it's a really good, a really excellent step in the right direction, and I think um, uh, some of the commission, I think most of the commission will feel better about this. Whether they'll vote for it, you know, we'll, we'll see. I I can't predict. But um, I think that they will definitely be happy, happier um, with the concessions that have been made. Now, there are some people, some neighbors who don't want it under any circumstances. There's different camps. Right. There's people that don't want it under any circumstances. Right. There's people that can live with it, but they felt that the earlier plans, I mean, they used the words like monstrosity. Um, I didn't like the earlier plans. Um, I thought they were too big. Uh, uh, I wasn't. I would had actually been one of the people to suggest going to two towers, but once the two towers are there, it really didn't accomplish what I had hoped for. I think this is much better than either of the other two plans. The developers. The developers are not going to make as much money. Um, the church is taking less money, uh, and I. Um, I think that will help, and I don't know what the, you know. But if the developers are making less, I suspect they're only going to have, I think, what, 76 yeah. um, units as opposed to 90. Um, but 
Can you see any reason why this would be delayed further, or do you think that uh, the 21st, that's that's it, that that's, this is, it's been going on for so long? Um, I'm, I'm sure there's a reason out there that could be delayed. I, I, I can't predict what it is. I think that w there will be a vote on the 21st. We're talking about the Chapel by the Lake, as you obviously can tell. Um, so these are the new plans that have been proposed um, and will come before the commission on the 21st. Um, this is, um, as we were saying, uh, significantly fewer condos um, and um, certainly smaller than um, what was originally proposed. I think 40%, I guess. Uh, in terms of volume, has been this, has this been the most contentious development debate that you can recall? No. <laughs> <laughs> when I was on commission, we had some uh, uh, other ones. You know, there's always um, th there's always people who feel very passionate one way or the other about their city, and I love that. It's because they love their city, and they want it to be the best city it can be. And whether you love this and want it to have it have it there or whether you don't, either way, people approach this by wanting to do what's best for our city. Um, so, you know, we, we're we a city that really gets involved in, in these uh, issues, and I think that's great. The gentleman anything else? I was just going to change yeah. topics. If yeah, fine. Good. Right. good morning again, Mayor. Um, Tell me your name again. I'm Michael sorry. Butchner. Michael. Yeah. Butchner. Um, wanted to ask you about the uh, 45th Street uh, flea market. Sylvia Moffat told us that um, she thinks the only solution is it for it to be closed. Um, do you agree? Uh, can you talk about the status of that? Well, I think that there are multiple solutions. I mean, our first priority is to make it a safe place for people to be. And whatever we need to do to make it a safe place and bring it within code, we're going to. Um, on, on the other hand, um, next week, sometime, maybe two weeks, I'm having a meeting with the merchants who are there. Now, these are people who uh, make their livelihood on the work that they do there, the businesses that they have there, and they want me to hear their side of, of this. Um, and I'm happy to do that, but the bottom line is it needs to be safe. And if you want to continue being a merchant in, in the flea market, then uh, you need to help us to make sure that it's a safe place to be. You comfortable with it remaining open? Um, only, uh, only if in fact there, uh, you know, it is a, a safe place and it's a clean place and it's, um, you know, meets all our codes and meets our safety guidelines. I'm, I'm, uh, I think we have to think that there are, you know, as I said, 100 merchants that I'm going to be meeting with who, who will lose their place of business if we close it. So there's always two sides to every story. Um, about two or three months ago, uh, the police department said there was some kind of plan going into place with the flea market. Can you disclose what that plan is at this point? I cannot, but they have been doing significant work there along with our code enforcement department. And uh, they, they've been out there a lot. Have you had any contact, um, or has the police department had any contact with the owner of the flea market? Um, I have not had any contacts with the owner. I, I know that our police chief has reached out to the owner. I can't tell you for sure if he's talked to him or not. Okay, because I understand some individuals have been trying to track down this person, and it's been quite difficult. I understand that as well. Okay. Um, do you hold him responsible, liable for the situation? Well, I think he has a big part of the responsibility here. This is, um, you know, his... His, uh, his business, and if he wants it to be viable, then he needs to make sure that there's some changes there. Would you say at this point he's not living up to his end of the bargain, if you will? I um, I don't know what the interaction has been, so I'm hesitant to say that one way or the other. And, uh, but to the extent to which it's not safe, then he's not living up to his end of the bargain. <laughs> yeah. On the flip side, um, crime numbers have gone down again in the city here. Um, what's, what's, the, uh, what's behind that? Um, our police department. Uh, we have, uh, our police department's been doing incredible work reaching out to the neighborhoods. They are making database decisions uh, through their intelligence-led policing where they've been able to pinpoint the areas where they're the highest level of crimes. You can actually look at um, uh, printouts that show us the time of day, 
the crimes are occurring and uh, as a result that's where the police officers are focusing their time and the area where we have had the highest level of crime we've seen the greatest decrease um, at last month it was like 78 percent or 75 percent decrease in crime um, so you know we can make we can make a real difference by targeting those areas. Our, our police department's doing a lot of community-based work. They're out in the community all of the time. I uh, come to all of my mayor's community meetings um, and have built a really good relationship with the public. So I think that that has also helped. So better policing overall is what you would say. Absolutely. The technology too. It seems technology, to be involved. Technology. Um, sort of a, a different uh, look at how to deploy um, the police, uh, how to use them and where to use them. Um, uh, certainly, you know, one of the things that we've been doing is we've been going out on a regular basis. Uh, police officers have been going out with Leela Jordan, who runs our Vickers house, and reaching out to homeless and um, trying to uh, get them off the street, offering them um, a placement, looking, helping them look for a place to live, helping them to get back home if that's where they want to go. Um, so there's, there's a lot of this um, uh, collaborative work being done with our code department and the police department and uh, Rickers House. Talk about, uh, switch gears to development if you will. Um, obviously with the new outlet mall coming there must be a lot of excitement right now and I understand that uh, there's been, um, I guess, a, a, a lot of permits recently that have been pulled um, I guess it's a very high number. Um, what, what do we expect? What do you expect to see here in the next few months, or maybe the next few years, with growth and development here in, in the city? Yeah. Um, we have, uh, at this point, we're projecting 1.3 billion dollars in new construction over the next three to five years. Um, we have permits that uh, indicate that, uh, and um, it's really pretty exciting, actually. Um, we have a lot of, you know, not all of that's going to get built, but, you know, we, we have already moving to construction about $800 million. Um, so, uh, you know, we're pretty excited. We want to make sure that um, as we look at these um, new developments, just like we've done with this, that we get a lot of input from the public and the neighborhoods, that they're able to have a say on what their city looks like and what it should look like. Um, but we can certainly see an upturn in the economy. What do you believe spurring all this growth? Well, I think uh, there are a few things. Um, I think there's a general uptick in the economy across the country, and we're seeing a part of that. Um, additionally, um, West Palm Beach has become um, a very, uh, our processes and procedures are much more streamlined, much more user friendly. Um, you can get a permit an average of seven days now, which before it was up over 30 days. Um, our building department, our planning department are working together beautifully so that when a customer comes in, whether it's a homeowner trying to build um, a screen porch on the back of their house or whether it's a developer, um, they're getting really excellent service. And uh, I think that that's a part of it as well. What's the uh, what's the mood or the atmosphere like with the I guess the Elton Mall is going to be opening here in what about a month and a half or two months? We're or so. very excited. We just um, saw um, uh, plans for all the stores and the permits that have been coming in, and we know that the outlet center has already spurred development all around it on each of the four corners or the other three corners of Palm Beach Lakes and and, and Converse. So we've got. You know, um, a, a multifamily housing unit going in at Meisner Lakes, which is um, um, sort of behind the Home Depot. We have something called the Jefferson that's proposed for the other side of Congress, the other side of um, 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 Palm Beach Lakes. And of course, we've got the Presidential Country Club. I don't know if you've driven down Congress at all recently, but um, they're going full. Full, you know, full steam ahead on the presidential country conference. So I think a lot of that's been a result of having them all come in there. We've gotten a few emails at the station. Um, some people concerned maybe about security at this new outlet mall. Is there a plan in place? There's a plan. Sure. Can you there's, share what yeah, you know? There's been a plan. Um, I know that they have been working with our police department on it, and um, they're very, very sensitive to the security issues. Um, uh, I, I can't tell you anything more than that. Okay, but you guys are aware of 
you know, some concerns that people have. Um, I, um, I, I believe that that's going to be insignificant just because of the fact that there's so much going on there now. I mean, when it was abandoned, um, yeah, the crime, you know, was a concern there. But I, I think the fact that there's just so much activity going on in that area now is just going to be very different. Does that change any patrols or does that change anything for the police department? Yeah. It already has. It already has. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Can you uh, uh, talk about uh, how you think it's gone so far the first few weeks with the new uh, CRA setup? Oh, I think it's gone really well. Um, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I have to tell you, I'm very excited about this. We, um, uh, John Ward uh, has great experience that he brings here as a new CRA director. He's already been out talking to the people in Northwood. Um, he's put an offer in on a house in Northwood, which is where he's going to live. Um, we have um, brought to us um, a person who was born and raised in the Northwest, who is going to be focusing on Northwest redevelopment. This is a, 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 young, a young woman who grew up in our historic Northwest and is now coming back to help us to to move that whole redevelopment forward. Um, we have access to an economic development expert that we've been working with um, on our economic development strategy. Um, so I think just a variety of people that we're going to be able to work with. Um, we have laid out um, very specific 30-day plans, 90-day uh, plans for the um, uh, for RMA, uh, so they know what's important to us and what we expect to see happen. And of course, we'll be following up on those their goals and objectives for them. And then at some point, I think it's after the first month, then they they reconfigure as far as who stays on staff, and I'm trying to remember how it worked out in the contract. Yeah, That's they're they're working on that now. Um, I, I don't know what the deadline is or how that, but I, they're, they're working. I know all the in-house staff had the opportunity to apply to RMA. Mm -hmm. okay. To ask you, Mayor, what the rationale was behind doing this, was this a financial decision? What drove this? Um, <laughs> Elliot, do you think I should say to be more nimble or agile or what? Um, we needed a variety of people to really bring us to the next level with our CRA. We, we needed marketing specialists. We needed someone special for the Northwest. We needed um, uh, you know, a full-time CRA director who's sitting here. We couldn't afford it um, if we were just to go out and try and do that with um, city employees. Um, and so we went to um, a staffing outside staffing group and said, can you do this for us? For the same amount of money, it's not cheaper, but for the same amount of money, we're going to get a wider variety of expertise, which is really what I wanted, because we have, we needed people to take us to the next level. And what I've said all along is we, we needed, and let me show you this. And I had to laugh when I read this. Um, this is the New York Times business section. Had a whole article on management be nimble and how important it is for management to be nimble and to be able to um, address the issues, be prepared to address a variety of issues, and that's really what we wanted um, to have happen with CRA. So this kind of just takes you to the next level, affords you more opportunity? Absolutely. And we've we got some new things happening, and we needed new expertise to help us to address the Broadway corridor, um, you know, the work that we're doing on the North End, our, certainly our downtown. And again, from the financial aspect, it was the same. It's the same. The same. Yeah. Seventy thousand a month, is that right? Um, I think that was, it's, and then it changes, and it starts at one level and changes to another seventy. Mm -hmm. But we had money in the budget for personnel, and that that's what what's being used. Everybody good? Okay. Thank you.